Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. It's time for the return of my series Ranked, where I take an album or a discography and then rank everything from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the classic debut album that released in 2004 by the alternative rock band The Killers. It's called Hot Fuss and it's one of my favorite records of all time. Hot Fuss is such a legendary album, there's so much to talk about, the murderous themes that really present themselves all throughout. There's a lot of conspiracy theories involving this album, and while I'll briefly touch on some of those as we go along, I think you should mainly jump down that rabbit hole for yourself. Also, a note to my UK viewers that I know we're tuning in because you guys love the killers, as do us Americans. I am not including glamorous indie rock and roll, the 12th track on your edition of the record, because it was never released in that format in the US Standard Edition. It's on Sawdust, it's on the compilation, I know it is a part of that, and I never knew it as being a piece of hot fuss, although I do love the song. Alright, no more puttering around, let's get right to it. 11 songs to rank from worst to best. What will prevail? I hope you enjoy the video. Keep in mind, it's just my opinion. I would love to see how you would rank these 11 tracks. Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to drop a like while you're here. Well, something had to come last, and unfortunately for Believe Me Natalie, it's Believe Me Natalie. It comes in the back half of the record, and I know that so many people are already probably talking about how, oh, this album is so front-loaded. I know that it can be easy to say that because the singles are so damn good, but also there are genuine moments of gold in the back half. And again, this is a perfect score record to me. I just think Believe Me Natalie can get slightly irritating the more listens you give it, especially if you're sitting down, maybe you listen through the record twice in a row. You can feel that maybe Brandon's vocal tone, it's a a little bit overdone, a little bit too earnest in how it's trying, and the believe me, Natalie, the convincing, it just doesn't fully get through to me all the time. Can I change your mind? In number 10, we have Change Your Mind, a romantic little ode that is nice to listen to. It's a very simple, straightforward song, and that can also kind of be its Achilles heel, at least the more times you come back to it. I feel that compared to the other gargantuan titans on Hot Fuss, this one, as Brandon, or else the narrator of the track, tries to rekindle this old flame, I just find myself not caring as much by the time the song ends. All the way down at number 9, it crushes my soul a bit to put everything will be alright at this spot. It's the closing track on the standard US edition, and this song has grown on me so much over the years. You can just feel the sinister undertones, like something devious is going on here that's not necessarily meeting the surface or our eyes, and as I listen to it more, you just fall into this ethereal vibe that really puts out this atmosphere. The synthesizers do a great job at creating tone, and also the kind of lush, sparse instrumentation. Brandon's voice feels like it's floating like an angel. It's pure goodness, but again, compared to some of the others, it's just not quite as high. You should see regret painted all over my face right now as we approach number eight, Smile Like You Mean It. This was one of the singles off of Hot Fuss. It got a music video that I absolutely love. I don't think the killers themselves like it for whatever reason. But the orgasmic synthesizers on this that really just back up this sarcastic tone. There's heavy doses of sarcasm just fluttering all about this song. Save your face, you know you've only got one. The guitars that back this up and the pre-chorus. Everything about this song feels like a tidal wave that's slowly rushing over you. Leave your legacy and go Perhaps one of the most heavily debated and discussed songs on the entire record clocks in at number 7, Andy, You're a Star. This song is one that I think a lot of people feel is about a gay relationship, at least one where there's a gay crush involved, and I can see that perspective for sure. In fact, I think it might be accurate. I think that Brandon Flowers had this athlete in high school that maybe picked on him, his name was Andy, and now that Brandon is a star, the roles reverse, but along the way, maybe that admiration and secret jealousy for what he had was a possible love connection that was missed. I love the slow, brooding feel of this song, something that can also be heard on the Samstown track Uncle Johnny that I absolutely love. I love the fact that it just leaves a searing imprint with you and it makes you think about what's below the surface. Well, somebody told me you had a boyfriend who looked like a girlfriend. We've arrived at Club Heaven as number six is Somebody Told Me. 
This was one of my first two Killers songs. I'm not sure if it was this or Mr. Brightside, but I still continuously jam this song all the time. It has a little bit of disco with that syncopated drum loop and also the guitars that build up so nicely, the squealing synthesizers. Brandon Flowers is talking about this girl that maybe he can't get with, maybe there's something between them. He's been breaking his back 17 songs, dancing the night away, and it's just so good. It has this pulsating dark vibe to it, and I can't get enough still. Oh, so you're looking for the most underrated song on Hot Fuss? Well, let me insert number five on top into the mix. This absolutely deserves a top five placement if you ask me. I was really drawn to this. Even though it was a deep cut, this was the first deep cut on Hot Fuss that I fell in love with. It has these piping hot synthesizers and dazzling guitar sparkles that really just bring the mood up in a major way. It swaggers with false confidence. It's acting like, oh, we're on top. Nothing can bring us back down. But really, they're just showing off. Perhaps they're like on a drug binge and like the coke or whatever else is giving them false confidence. Whatever it's exuding though, it absolutely works. And this song is a dose of magic. But no one heard her cry. If you're a big fan of the Killers, then you're certainly familiar with the label The Murder Trilogy, and part two of that trilogy is Midnight Show. This song lands at number four on my personal ranking, and it's so good, it gives you this feeling like you're running away from the crime that you just committed, and I know that's what the song is portraying, but basically I'm saying it does that exceptionally well. There aren't too many songs that can capture that feeling like you're in the getaway car and you just did something awful. You murdered your girlfriend, Jenny, or whatever the case may be. You know you did it and you're driving faster and faster, just howling down the highway. This song captures all of that in a bubble and it's so spectacular. I still can't wrap my head around how well they did it. The guitars, the drums, the atmosphere, it's untouchable. <laughs> As we enter the top three, I think a lot of you know exactly what's coming, but Jenny was a friend of mine comes in first. This is the conclusion of the Murder Trilogy, and unfortunately the other track didn't make the final cut of the album, Leave the Bourbon on the Shelf, the actual start to this. You can find that on Sawdust. It's highly recommended from me so you get the full story, but honestly, this track, this fucking stud right here, that iconic bass line slaps so unbelievably hard. It opens the record, but it's the closing part to the story. As some other people have said, the best stories are not told in chronological order, and Jenny was a friend of mine is living proof of that. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present for your consideration Mr. Brightside, the best song about jealousy ever written. I have never seen a song that captures that emotion so, so well. You are sick to your stomach. You don't know what's going on because you're not in the room. You're just letting your imagination run wild. Mr. Brightside features some of the most iconic guitar riffs of all time. The drums, the vocals, they are yearning so hard. It is angst. It is swelling up inside you. And then the release of emotion when we get to that chorus, the meltdown in the bridge, it gives me chills just thinking about it. So I'm going to have to go ahead and move on to number one. Without a doubt, at number one on my definitive ranking of Hot Fuss, Worst to Best, the best song that the Killers have ever created, and my second favorite song of all time, All These Things That I've Done by the Killers. This song is their Bohemian Rhapsody. Think of it as their shining star queen moment because it takes your breath away with how good it is. It goes through phases. It starts off with that chiming piano. You hear the distant vocals and then that guitar, that stomping drum rhythm. It really picks you and rallies you up. And then we get into the actual song, the actual cataclysm of the story and the plot here. It is unbelievably good. It picks up my emotions and just takes me up to the heavens each time I listen to it. It's a song that I can never get tired of and that I got soul but I'm not a soldier it's legendary it's a chant for the ages and the fact that I actually got to see this live it absolutely touched my soul it broke my heart shattered it into a million pieces and put it all back together because it's unfathomably good unfathomably unfathom unfathomably I can't say the word Thank you guys so much for tuning into my ranking of Hot Fuss, every song worst to best. 
What did you think of my personal ranking? Any major agrees, disagrees, sound off in the comment section down below and rank the album for yourself down there. Don't forget to drop a like on the video while you're here, subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on future episodes like this. Ranked is definitely back. I have more episodes up my sleeve very, very soon. If you want to support the channel financially, then hit my Patreon. It should be on screen now or else the top link down below. All of my socials are down there as well, and I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.